Hey everyone, welcome back to Crime Weekly News. I'm Derek Lavasser. And I'm Stephanie Harlow. So we have a couple house cleaning things. We're gonna get through them quick, but they're actually one's not that major, but the second thing is is really major. So I'll get to the not so major stuff first. Okay, criminal coffee. I know shipping's crazy. There's not so much that we can do with USPS. It is what it is. That's the cheapest, most economical way to do it. However, a lot of you have been DMing me, emailing me, emailing Criminal Coffee saying, hey, can I just come to the warehouse and pick it up? It's not practical to do it that way. We're not here 24-7. So if you are from Rhode Island or Southern Massachusetts and you're within a 15-mile radius of the Criminal Coffee headquarters, when you go to checkout, you will now see an option for local delivery. It's only $3.00. And we will deliver it to your door within that week that you order it. This is a pilot program. Not saying it's going to be perfect. So deal, you know, bear with us here. But we're trying to save money. There's really no advantage to us to doing it. We are trying to get more local business, which is the second part of this, right? If you're someone from Rhode Island or Massachusetts and you have a local cafe that you enjoy getting your coffee from and they're not currently offering a, their own coffee, right? Right. If you're familiar with someone in there, a lot of these coffee shops, people get really familiar with the owners, et cetera. See if they're open to, to carrying our coffee there. We'll set up a, a rack. We'll, we'll deliver our coffee when we're out making our deliveries. We'll obviously talk business with them as far as how that works financially for them. But listen, if they're not carrying a, a coffee that's proprietary to them and they wouldn't mind setting up a rack in there, we'll deliver the coffee and it'll allow you to pick it up for no shipping fee and also allow all the people in your area to pick it up for no shipping fee. So again... Local delivery, if you're someone in Rhode Island or Mass, we're going to try to get it to you that way, save you a couple bucks. And if you're someone who has a cafe near you and you want to not only get the coffee quicker to yourself, but also to the people that live in your area, please consider helping us and uh, we'll, we'll grow together. That was the, the one criminal coffee thing. And the second thing is more important, even though it's also related to criminal coffee. Yes, it is. So as you know, if you buy a bag of criminal coffee or if you buy the K-Cups, a portion of the proceeds goes to fighting crime. So Derek and I choose some sort of cause, whether, you know, it's well in any way we can help because we know that these true crime cases, what they're greatly lacking is funds and resources. And so we actually donated last time to helping identify the body of somebody that was found dead and unidentified. And this is the Preble Penny case out of Ohio. They have made a break in the case with the help of our funding forensically, which is very, very cool. And they are doing a press conference in Ohio on November 17th to announce this new information. Derek and I were invited to be there. Unfortunately, it's a busy time with the holidays for both of us, so we are unable to be there. But if they are streaming it live somewhere, we will grab that. We'll hop on a live ourselves and we'll watch it all together and discuss it and discuss the new developments. So that is very exciting. Very, very it's exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. And this, I will say without foreshadowing too much we know what's going to be announced mm -hmm. it's wild. wild you guys i promise you whatever you're thinking it is it's a major twist that's all we'll say it's a major twist i hope they stream it i believe they're going to and if they do we'll be there and, and you guys should be there as well if you're available to because listen you help solve this if you're someone who purchased a bag of coffee right it may just seem like something ah, it's insignificant whatever there was funds from the from your purchase that went directly to funding this case so you are part of this solve. You helped come up with the results that they're going to announce for this case. And like I said, you definitely want to be there. It is a big announcement. We're extremely proud of it because this is the whole reason we decided to start Criminal Coffee in the first place. And we're just getting started. Once this one's done and in the books, we've already got other cases we're looking at. So November 17th, we'll remind you again next week. But if you can make it, we would love to have you there as part of the stream. It should be really cool to... Uh, experience that together, mm -hmm. right? Very cool. Okay. I'm really excited. So, yeah, me too. It's going to be good. And I wish we could be there, but again, it's not about us. It's about the case. So, But it's good to see like something that we put together. And when I say we, I mean everybody, right? Everybody, everybody here, yeah. Something we put together come to fruition and do some good in, in the world. And that's right? what's really cool about it at the end of the day. Yeah, we can talk about it, right? We can cover a lot of cases here, but what are we actually doing about it? Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing. This case did not have the funding to get it to where it is today. It was your contributions that helped push it across the line. So everyone should be extremely proud. And I hope that you tune in to check out the announcement because, I, like I said to you, it's going to be 
you're in for a surprise. We'll just say that. We know it's taken a long time. And when you hear where this case went, you'll understand. You'll understand why it took so long. <laughs> so, all right, that out of the way, let's get into this week's case. This is an unfortunate situation. I actually just covered it on Crime Feed, which is how I became aware of it. Stephanie, were you aware of it before I talked to you about it or no. did I kind of put it in your ear? No, because it was Halloween. So I kind of was not in the current news. Yeah, you weren't space. in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually told her about this case because I, I found we had Robert Card that had just happened. You also just had Pedro Agati was another one that where there's something similar that just happened. And now we have this case involving Aaron Pennington uh, and his wife, Brienne. I'm going to get into it right now. 33-year-old Aaron Pennington is accused of shooting and killing his wife, Brienne, in her, their home on Sunday, October 22nd, 2023. At the time of this recording, Aaron fled the home and is still at large and police are asking locals to be on the lookout. I don't know where he is. We're going to get into all of it. I'll save it for the end as far as my speculation on where he currently mm -hmm. is and his current condition. But terrible case. There's a lot of details about it. I had given Stephanie some of the specifics and then she took it to the next level. So, Stephanie... Fill everyone in who hasn't heard about this case yet. Yeah, because this is a newly developing case, I am going to be covering it in a coffee and crime time in much more detail. I mean, I yeah, went, there's I went, a lot. Yeah, I went through this dude's social media all the way back to when he first started a Facebook page and found some stuff out about him. But I am waiting for more information because at this point, it's really the same information that's being published. And this man is still at large, which is mm -hmm. why I thought it was important to cover it, regardless of everything being in, because he's out there. Uh, law enforcement says they're they're basically functioning on this as if he is still alive. He has survival training through the military because he was uh, in the Air Force for, I think, I think it was eight years. So they're they're thinking he he does have the ability to survive in the wilderness if if he had to. So they're basically looking at this as if he is still alive and letting people know in this area, um, basically to be on the lookout. And this area is Gardner, Mass, which is central Massachusetts. So um, an arrest warrant has been issued for Aaron Pennington after his wife Brienne Pennington was found in their bedroom with a gunshot wound to her face. Three shell casings were found in the bedroom, but no weapon. Apparently, Brienne did have a firearm that she owned for protection, and that is the weapon that is missing. Now, during the investigation, the police learned that the couple had been going through some hard times. Aaron had been struggling with his mental health. He'd threatened to take his own life before. And ultimately, it became too much for Brienne. From what I could tell, I saw an interview with her best friend, and this best friend said she did everything she could. She tried, she tried, she tried, she tried to get him the help that he needed, and he just wasn't doing it, and he wasn't getting better. So Brienne had been saving money, and she planned to take their four young children and move to Texas, where is where she was originally from. Uh, her parents, I believe, and siblings still live there. So after... Um, Aaron shot Brienne. He took off in his BMW and it was later found abandoned the following day. So Monday, October 23rd in a wooded area near Gardner at 5 p.m. This wooded area is Camp Collier. Now, depending on what 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 kind of source you look at, it's a different acreage, but it's anywhere between like 200 to 350 acres of wilderness that's uh, trusted to the Boy Scouts and they can use it and like church groups and stuff can use it. And the arrest warrant says that Aaron could be armed and dangerous. I mean, I would assume that he is since the, the gun is missing. And because of his survival training for him from his time in the Air Force, uh, they're, they're kind of considering that he could still be alive. A search warrant also gave law enforcement access to Aaron's cell phone, where they discovered a note that he made on Saturday, October 21st at 7.04 p.m. So this is the night, well, the night before Brienne was found dead. And the note says, quote, don't say anything. Be quiet. If she wakes up, just say you're getting nasal spray. Get on side of bed, very close proximity to head. Put hole in her head, end quote. As of now, the police have suspended their search for Aaron Pennington. They said they will continue periodic searches of the Gardner area, and they're asking neighbors and people in that area to remain vigilant. Aaron Pennington is a white man. He stands at about six foot two, approximately 175 pounds. He has blonde hair, blue eyes. If you're watching on YouTube, we're going to put a picture up of him. And state police ask that anyone who has information about the case or knows where Aaron might be, they say, do not, if you see him, 
Um, if you if you see Aaron or you see someone who you think is Aaron, do not approach him. Just immediately call the police. You can also how do you pronounce that? Worcester. It's Worcester. What w- w- Worcester? Worcester. 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 Yeah, not Worcester. Worcester. Okay, Worcester makes more sense to it. It's Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, so you can call the Worcester County DA's office. The number for them is 508-832-9124. Or you can call the Gardner Police at 978-632-5600. And if you're in the area, I assume you can just pick up your phone and call 911 too. And if uh, Aaron is in that area. But I guess if you're like outside of that like Gardner Central Mass area and you see him, like if he took off and made it to another state, don't call 911 because that'll take forever to kind of reroute you to where you need to be. Call one of those numbers that I just said. But he is allegedly still out there. Now, Derek does not believe that he is still alive. Yeah. Derek believes he he pulled a Brian Laundry, like the coward yeah, I, I, I think po- I think law enforcement believes that as well. That's right? why you think they suspended the search? 100%. Yeah. 100%. But it's a, it's a so there's a th- couple of things. Yes, even me, I'm telling you guys right now, if you're in that area, everything Stephanie said, I'm not just saying it to, because it's the correct thing to say you want to be vigilant because i have nothing definitive or that tangible that i can say he's dead but if i were a betting man i would put a large sum of money on it that he is deceased in the woods somewhere and that's why they haven't found him he probably went somewhere to not be found knowing that he wouldn't have to come back out of that location so he could be he could be really deep in the woods somewhere in a cave or whatever where he took his own life and he's hoping that he's never found that's honestly what I think. Um, and we've we've seen the historical data behind it with these cowards. This is what they do. They, you know, they they kill someone be, for whatever reason, none of it's justified, and then they go and kill themselves. Like we just had Robert Card, he killed himself in the back of a tractor trailer. Uh, the Pedro Agate case, if you're not familiar with it, he killed the cir- the circuit court judge, then he drove into the wooded area, killed himself there. This is just and what they do. And that was also in in regards to some sort of marital dispute. Yeah. yeah. And we talked more about this when we were talking about the case like, you know, for the most part, Aaron, based on what you're going to cover on Coffee and Crime, I don't want to take too much of it here, but he really was lost before Brienne and the marital issues were there. I really felt like his identity was Brienne. And when he started to feel that she was going to leave him, there was nothing else for him. So I feel like this is a classic case of if I can't have you, nobody can. So he kills her. Or like, her. what am I without you? Yep. Right. And he- it doesn't hurt, Derek, that that these that that the Penningtons were LDS, so they were Mormons, right? And what, what is it with you in the LDS cases, man? You just—I mean, it's—is it me—is it my fault, is or it is you? it that these LDS guys keep doing this shit, right? Yeah, we could ask that question, and and <laughs> we we do have to start asking that question because I've I've really defended Mormons before in the in the way of like. We can't just put a blanket generalization over an entire religion and say, like, oh, if if you're a Mormon, you're going to do this to your wife. However, there have been multiple, multiple cases now of men from the LDS church doing this to their wives. And I think we have to start asking the question of what kind of um, what kind of values and ethics are being programmed into them? What are they being sort of taught throughout their time? in the LDS church that is making them feel this is acceptable, right? Because is it one of those things? Because you know that they, they that Mormons believe when you're married in, in you know, a temple that you are together in the afterlife, right? So maybe he's thinking, well, if we can't be together in this life. Yeah, let's just speed up the process. We'll, we'll be together in, in the kingdom of heaven, you mm-hmm. know, but then. Interesting. Yeah. Flawed, flawed uh, theory, but sure. I mean, yeah, no, yeah I mean, it's not. No, it's it's a uh, it's a terrible situation. Again, just to reiterate, don't go out there saying, "Oh, Derek said he's dead. We're fine." You obviously want to be out there and be cautious of your surroundings. And if you're someone who's a hunter or something like that, and you have trail cams set up, you know, take a look at them. Take a look at them if they're in that area. See if you see anybody passing by. But my my guess is that he's out there deep in the woods, and you could have a situation where you have animal activity, some type of predation where there might not be much left of him. Um, he also could have, I don't know what, if there's cliffs or whatever. I don't know what's out there. I don't know the geography. I'm sure it's not too vast, but he could get lost pretty easily out there if he doesn't want to be found. And you got it's a needle in a haystack for these law enforcement officials because they don't know where he is. So every single square foot is a possible location and there's only so much they can do. And we're talking 
a lot of acreage to cover. But the fact that they're suspending their search when he could he could still be armed and dangerous doesn't look good optically because you're thinking, wow, why would they leave him out there? He's a potential murderer. It's be it's because of what I'm saying. That's my that's my interpretation of it. So we may never get answers to this one because they may never find him. But I do think what could end up happening is a hunter or someone of that nature who's out in the woods, boy scout, whoever it might be, is out there. And unfortunately, if he's in the open, comes up on this. And that's how he's eventually found. It may I, be years. I almost feel like there's a chance he's still alive, you know, because he see this was premeditated enough where he's like making these notes in his phone that he could have set something up. He could have had another car waiting there. All right, pause. Can I give you can I ask you a question? Yeah, because this is a, this is a certain this is what I've been hearing from other people, too. What is the end goal here? If that's the plan, right, you're trying to get to the border. You're pulling a Caitlin Armstrong, right? You're trying to get out of the country. If you're driving your car into the woods, you could make the argument that he drove it into the woods as a decoy and then he was on foot the entire time going the opposite direction to throw off police. But if he actually entered those woods, what is the end game? To sit out in the woods, to basically shit in a hole and cover it up and eat off the land for the rest of your life? Like, what is the plan? No, I think if he went in those woods, he and left his car there, he's no longer there. Like I said, he could have. It's had, a decoy. What do you mean? Like he goes into the woods to make it look like he's going in there to hunker down in there, but in fact, he's just using that to get. To, and maybe he started in there, but he's he's detouring yeah, like he out of there. Yeah, he could have had another vehicle set up where he parked his car, and he just left his car, took that car, took off. Right? We don't we don't know. He yeah, could have taken some... money out. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's not enough. The police know. The police yeah. have looked at his bank accounts. The police have looked at his internet activity credit cards. and credit cards. Yeah. So, but he wouldn't be using credit cards. You know, if anything, he would have been spending months or weeks taking out small amounts of cash so that he had cash on him when he when he fled fled when he fled, and so he wouldn't have to use credit cards. He wouldn't have. I to wonder do... if his phone was on him. It doesn't look like it because remember they got the search warrant for his phone. They can get the they search. They could do for, it through I, if he had an iPhone. They could look at his yeah, they iCloud his iCloud. But like I have, have my iCloud phone. turned off. I don't want everything freaking backing up to my iCloud. That's weird. Yeah. So he and if he left his phone behind, that's another reason why I think he might still be out there and he planned this. Now, once again, they'll be able to see that if he took out small amounts of cash, they're gonna know what that means. And he did that repeatedly, but that still wouldn't help them find him. Mm. You know, because yeah. now he's on the run. He's got a car with, you know, that we have no idea. Law enforcement doesn't know about. Uh, he's got cash and maybe fake identification. According to his LinkedIn page, he worked for Raytheon, which is the whip weapons defense uh, company, like a missiles weapons defense company. Yeah, he I was in what the he Air did there, Force. Though. He could have been a janitor for all we know. Nothing no, against janitors, No, he was by not a janitor. He was a senior supervisor or something. He's got experience with the Air services. Force. <laughs> He's got experience with the Air Force. <laughs> and it says he has he has special he has special security clearance. That's what it says on his LinkedIn. So, I mean, he may have some knowledge or some connections where he can get like a fake passport, where he can be be out of there. We just don't know. Now, in my opinion, based on what I know from his social media, he's not a Brian Laundry, but I also don't think he's the kind of person who would kill his wife and then be on the run. He yeah. seemed to be like like we had discussed earlier. He's not right mentally. He left the military in February of 2023. He left the Air Force altogether. And Raytheon says he hasn't worked there since March of 2023. And then in October of 2023, he's killing his wife. The job with Raytheon is the reason why they moved to Massachusetts to begin with, because they just moved there in June of 2023. So there's a lot of life changes happening. He's got some mental health issues. He seemed to be very, very, very codependent on his wife, Brianne. And I, I think you're probably right. There's just an there's there's still an a possibility that he's out there and he's yeah. more nefarious and more calculating than he appears to be. I'm not going to yeah. put anything past him. The man shot his wife in the face and, and wrote a freaking note about it beforehand. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like yeah, these are not vigilant. a lot of steps to remember, you know, and there's no, there's this nothing is such wrong. A, isn't that a weird note to write, dude? Like, yeah, we, no, well, he's just, he's got some problems. Why would and you that's have to why... write that down? He's... Yeah. Well, stay, stay vigilant out there. Be aware of your surroundings, but if you're asking me, he's dead. He's definitely dead. But I, I do want to bring this back to what's important at this point. And I don't know if you mentioned it or not. It's either three or four children. How many children do they have? Four. 
four chi- four kids. And yes. I did you, I don't I don't think you mentioned, but the whole way this came up about was he leaves the house and he basically tells his kids, "Don't go in the bedroom. Mommy's crying." And so very quickly after he leaves the house, the kids go to the next door neighbor. And and the neighbor comes over and obviously everything unfolds from there. But you think about these four kids and how their life, their lives have now been affected by this. They've lost a, a mother and a father and their life is forever changed by yeah. this. And that's honestly yeah. even on the crime feed what, what really strikes me because they're just so innocent and they have no say in all of this. And to think that they were downstairs and their mom was in the room with the door closed and she's dead deceased. And it sounds on the surface like they never went in there. I hope not. Which, man, but I pray maybe that's they the did. Case. I mean, maybe he locked the door. I don't know. I'm they're, praying they're young that's the too. Case. I think the, the youngest is two. I believe the oldest is nine. They're yeah. very young. I'm praying that they listened to him and they didn't go in the room or they, like you said, the door was locked. It's just a horrible case. It's a horrible case. And I just don't, I don't. I guess I don't understand because I'm not in the shoes of these individuals and clearly they're they're disturbed. But man, if you if you're feeling that down, and I, I'm not I'm not I'm not condoning this at all, but if you're feeling that out of it where you're not gonna go seek professional help and you're not gonna go see a doctor, you're not gonna do all these things, and you think the only way out is to end your life, right? Mm. Well, if that's really the choice you come to, end your life. Don't end anybody else's. I, I just I'm not understanding how we get to that point. Like all these cowards that are taking their own lives after causing a mass shooting or killing their significant other or killing a judge. Dude, just take out yourself. We'll mourn you. Just take out yourself. Why are you why are you having to put this on other people? And and I'm not trying to and I why would you do that to your kids? You know, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, think about it. Think about it. And I'm not trying to diminish like mental health or anything like that. Like it's a it's a real thing. It's a serious thing. And I think it's a it's the core of a lot of issues we have. But I'm just not understanding like the need to to kill others before to, immediately to burn killing it all yourself. Down, to burn it all down before you leave it. Yeah. Come on. I, I just mean, got no I got no place for it. I just no tolerance for it. And that's it's a major issue. And we will keep you guys updated. Either way, if they find Aaron, if they don't find him, then you know, I guess we'll all assume what it is. He could be on the run, I guess. But um if there is an update in the case, we will let you know. And just remember. Final, the positive note, November 17th, if you're not going to watch Crime Weekly this week, November 17th, press conference, Preble Penny. We will be there streaming it. If it's if it's live on something, I'm going to confirm that. If there's a time for it, I'll make sure we say it in next week's episode and we post it on social media. And if you want to get your criminal coffee and you're from Rhode Island or Mass, you got local delivery now. We're going to deliver it to your door. I'm going to be there in a Ken costume like I was on Halloween mm-hmm. in 37 degree weather. Just kidding. That Put the disclaimer at the bottom, Shannon. That will not happen. That will not happen. But whatever it takes. That's all I got. Any final words from you? We can dive into this crime weekly? No, I mean, I'm just, I'm sad. It's sad and it happens too often. It happens too often. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, one time I, is one too many. Yeah. Obviously, there's, yes, there's women out there who kill their husbands. Yep. The rate of husbands killing their wives and or killing their children and then taking themselves out seems to be on the rise. It's a concern and we need to address it. I'll even say it, just men in general. It's predominantly men that are doing this. And it's just crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. just not getting the guys, look, come on, let's let's not go this route. Let's go, number one, let's get the help we need. Let's seek the professional help we need. Don't be too big for it. Nobody's too man to go speak to a professional. But if you've exercised every possible angle, medication, professional help, all these different things, Block out the voices that are saying to kill other people. Do what you got to do to yourself and let everyone else mourn you after the fact. Don't become a villain in your last moments. Like, it doesn't or, make any sense. I mean, sense. just get, get, get the help. Well, that's what I just said. You know, if if yeah. you've done all that like, and you've come to this conclusion, this is, and again, this might not be the popular opinion here, but if you've come to that conclusion that there's no other re- recourse, there's no other alternative, I, I wish you wouldn't, but if you're going to, do, do it to yourself. Leave everybody else out of it because you also have worse cases where they're taking out the kids and stuff as well. So it's just, it's not right. It's definitely not like what real men do. Hey, you said it. I, I mean, just, I, mean, I think a real man, what we can do, even if you're having a mental, if you're having some mental distress, go speak to a professional. Most of the time, if you, if you develop the courage to go do that, they will be able to help you. And I think that's the big takeaway here. Go seek the professional help. Nobody is above needing to speak to someone. I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it. It doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that you're self-aware 
and that you're willing to try to get better. That's all. And I know that it feels lonely right now, too. Like everyone, I think, is feeling more lonely than ever now. The post-pandemic world is a very strange one. You I know you feel sometimes like you need this person to be happy or you're just not going to be happy and you're very like enmeshed and you're very codependent and you feel like, oh, if I lose them, I lose everything. That is absolutely not true, obviously. And I know sometimes it takes a while to to feel that and get there. But it's better to go through a year of like depression and sadness and loss and missing a person than it is to go through a lifetime of, you know, not not being around because you you took yourself out and you took your wife out in the process. You will get over it. You will find happiness again. Get comfortable with being alone because you, we can't really rely on on anybody sticking around and nobody is entitled to stick around in your life just because you love them. And I think we really have to start accepting that as human beings because we become too dependent on others and we we make our identity where we make them our identity. And then, yes, there is a loss and a depression and a crushing darkness when we feel when we feel that we're going to lose that person and then we get afraid and stuff. So just, you know, everybody has to sort of like buckle up a little bit and just get used to being alone. You don't always want to be alone, but you can be and you'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, that was said. <laughs> Peaks and valleys. Guys, we appreciate you being here. We will see you Friday or we, you'll hear us on Friday on audio. YouTube will be out on Sunday. It's going to be Crystal Rogers part two. It's the final part. It's a good part. So make sure you tune and check it out. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you are. Turn your notifications on. If you're listening on audio, leave a review. You know the deal. We'll see you soon. Stay safe out there. Have a good night. Bye.